everybody, it's Sandy and welcome to my channel where today I'm going to transform the stamp Twirl Anya from the Greeting Farm via the Human Rainbow. Recently on my channel I posted something called the Human Rainbow. It was a video showing a bunch of different ways you can color skin tones, a whole rainbow of colors. And you can pick that up on my blog, there's a link to it in the description down below. It's a chart, a black and white chart that you can print out and hand color with your favorite colors or take my suggestions. And there's unlimited ideas for skin tones. I'm going to use a whole different set of skin tones here on Twirl Anya and we're going to make her a little African American girl. And the hair is the thing that I'm really aiming at, but I've got to of course get the skin done first. And I'm flipping things on their head just to show you you can do it. I'm using the purple color for the mid-tone. I usually tell people to use a purple or a blue for the shadow color. Well, you can also use it for the mid-tone. There's tons of colors in our marker collections that we just never show any love to. And here I wanted her face to just be a little more red, but I didn't want to go with the red, so I just went with purple for the mid-tone. And it worked out really great. She's got just a whole different flavor to her skin now than she would have had if I hadn't put that purple in there, and it's just much livelier. I'm using the same purple, V05, for the base color of her hair. I know, don't freak out, it's okay. I'm gonna use a C6, and that that's gonna be the second, like the, I guess the second base color to it. More of a mid-tone, but I'm trying to cover up most of the purple, but not all of it. I want some for the highlight on the top. And she's gonna have little teeny tiny ringlet curls. And you can make them more defined ringlets. Mine are gonna be just really, really tightly drawn little, little ringlets. And I'm doing it with the gray marker first, the C6. You may feel tempted to go lighter than this, but you want to have some really good rich color in here. And I wanted to have a really good medium tone. You can go over the next color with the medium if you want, but it really works best if you can get one layer of detail done with a mid-tone color like the C6. And if you wanted to do, you know, if you're going to do a little redhead with little curls and stuff, you can do the same thing, whatever your mid-tone is and then go in with the dark. And here I'm using a 100, although I actually switched around between a 100 and a 110, and then I went to an N10, I think it was, because the, my markers kept running out of ink while I was doing this. Yeah, and not because I was using a lot of ink here, they're just really in need of some marker maintenance. And uh, speaking of which, I do have a marker maintenance video on how to change inks and stuff, but that is a story for another day. All right, so I'm going to add a lot of detail around the edges because I want the outside edge of her hair to look all fuzzy and cute. And then I'm gonna go along each one of the inner lines, all of those lines that are drawn into the stamp and color right over top of them with the black marker because that's gonna make them kind of disappear. And I wanna make sure that they go away. If I made all of my lines in different directions than these these little lines in the stamp, then you would still see the stamp lines. Now there, there's other techniques you can use. You can, when you stamp it, you can wipe off the ink from those, from those types of lines. And if you have a stamp that doesn't lend itself as well as this one to doing this kind of a technique and you want to do this kind of hair, then just do that. Just take a, a damp paper towel or something or a baby wipe and wipe off the hair section, at least the, the center part of it so that you don't have to deal with all those lines. But it works really well for this because it's just giving me some good guidance on the directions that the hairs would fall if they're coming from the top of her head on down. And I'm just adding lots and lots of squiggles. I'm letting some of the C6 show through. And when I get to the top, I'm not going all the way to the top with the black. And I'm also trying hard not to do what I normally would do, which is to really hold that mar marker almost perfectly vertical because I'm going to get the tiniest tiniest, tiniest lines if I do that, but I'm trying to let you see what I'm doing a little bit here. And if your marker is in need of a new nib and it's kind of fat and chunky and it doesn't give you a small point, then you might just need a new nib for it. And that's very easy to replace. I'll link in the description to the, uh, the video that I have on changing nibs and uh, and marker maintenance and filling your markers, etc. So I'm gonna color her in real quick. And I started using two colors for the pink on her little outfit and uh, went outside the line. So I had to do a little little fixing with my zero marker. But I realized that all that beautiful detail on her skin and her hair, I don't need to put detail in her dress. 
that's one of the things that I've started to realize is that I tend to put detail in everything and you really just want to focus on what's important. And here the hair was the thing that was really going to get people to sit up and take notice of the card. So I don't have to put a whole lot of shading in it. And I didn't at all in this. And you can tell me at the end if you, you missed out on seeing some shading on that blue. But I also thought I would show you a little bit of my fussy cutting technique because I'm going to fussy cut and leave a white line around it. And I tend to move the paper a little bit more than the scissors, except for when I'm doing these teeny tiny details. And then I kind of move both so that I can make sort of little wiggly lines. But I also cut a section and then I, I kind of make a, a wider snip to cut the paper off. Because sometimes when you're fussy cutting and you're doing all this little detail stuff and you get to about, you know, that point right there, and the paper starts to almost tug on your scissors and then it's hard to turn and all that kind of stuff. So I just cut off chunks and uh, set them aside and it makes it easier to get back into the smaller areas of the fussy cutting. And it does take practice to get to the point where your white line is just about even all the way around. <laughs> so uh, practice that. It's a good skill to have, especially if you don't have a die for something. I'm using my finger knife to cut out that little tiny section in the middle. If you were to pop this on something white, you probably wouldn't need to do that, or you could color in a little tiny bit of the color behind it. But Next, I'm going to add my sentiment together. I'm going to die cut this friend from Tailored Expressions, and I'm going to put, it on, put some stick it on the back of my pink paper, because I want to do two layers. So I'm going to die cut two of them. And here's one that's die cut and has a sticky on the back. And this one also has sticky on the back. So while it's still in the negative die cut piece, I'm adding the second one on. Because if you try to add them when they're both flopping around, it's a little bit harder. So the piece holds it in place. And then I can pull it out and I've got my sentiment ready. I have die cut a circle. So I want to put her in a circle and create a little scene because that's what I do. And I've put the stick it on the back of my 110 pound cardstock. Anytime I'm going to use tiny, tiny fussy dies, I tend to try to use my heavy cardstock, my Nina, because it's just going to hold up better. And I'm not going to rip all those little tiny pieces. So everything stayed in place like I wanted it to, except for that little, little sw tire swing. There's two swings in the die set from Simon Says. And then here is the uh, sloped hills. And you can tell that these are not necessarily together. So you can do stitched hills and solid hills that are separate. But this piece, I like that it has both a solid solid cut and a, a little stitched cut. And I'm just gonna throw some marker on here. I had a little accident because um, everything in my house is overheated right now. And when I squeezed the trigger on this mister that has color and a splendor in it, it kind of did a big bloopy thing. But I wasn't sure if I liked it because I wasn't really going for a watercolor look, although it's a really cool effect. And I tried going over it some and then I spritzed it again and it just didn't do what I wanted. But, you know, I left it because a lot of it's going to be covered up anyway. I've left my die cut that is now a sticker, of course, in the negative. And that's because I wanted to color it and I figured it'd be easier to color it if all these pieces were sitting still and being held by the paper. So that's a wise thing. You could also just cut the tree out of one solid paper, but you wouldn't actually get multiple colors this way. So here I get little flowers or berries, whatever those are, leaves and stems. On the top piece that I had die cut, I'm just going to do quick airbrushing. And I put my marker into my airbrush handle, the little air gun, and I just squeeze the button and the color comes out. And it was super easy to do. I didn't even worry about making it all like super tidy because it's just going to be behind all of this. I want just some light color in there. So I taped the pieces together, the top and bottom from that die cut and stuck them on here. Didn't even worry about the edges being really tidy as well because I'm going to cover it all up. So I figured out where I want to put my tree, my little sticker tree, and I put that off to the side, pressed it down really good. I added my tire swing kind of temporarily because I just wanted to see where I wanted it have it by the time I'm done. And then I used power tabs to put on the back of this piece. And I put a couple around the, uh, the circle so that it would hold the circle off the paper as well. I put my little girl in place also with power tabs. And now this 
friend is a sticker so I was able to stick it on and it didn't quite fit but I thought oh that looks kind of cute to have the friend coming out from the bottom of the card that way. I added a little Signo pen detail around the edges and of course there is all kinds of dyes and stuff that would do that but I wanted the look of a little white pen and then I added some glossy accents because that seems to be my friend lately. Now to remind you that was what the stamp looked like before and that's what her hair looks like now. So you can do this with a whole lot of different stamps that you have in your collection and it works really great to transform a stamp into a whole other ethnicity. So look around at your stamps and see what you might try to do a different kind of thing for the human rainbow. You tag things with the human rainbow on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and I would love to see what you're creating. So on the right hand side is the human rainbow Copic version. And on the left is an experiment that I did mixing colors to do ethnic skin tones with clean color pens. All right, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.